It's Aaron, and today we're going to talk about something that I haven't really brought up for a couple of months, but we're going to talk about it today because I think it's important every once in a while to give a little bit of a refresher on uh, certain aspects, and I've gained a lot of subscribers since the last time I made a video about this, so I will leave a link in the description box below to a couple of other videos that I've done in a similar manner about this same uh, sort of topic, but today we're going to talk a little bit how the military would work in an anarcho-communist structured society, uh, so let's get started. So basically, in the society that we live in right now, uh, the, mi the military is uh, essentially a force that is centralized by the state that has a monopoly over force. Um, it is a power that has all of the guns, ammunition, resources, tanks, drones, bombs, planes, everything that the entire country can muster together to be able to create a strong, unified fighting force that they can send off now for money, according to Donald Trump, across the sea or across anywhere to fight in a bunch of interventionalist wars. At least that's the way the United States military operates. Now, with this comes a lot of major problems, one of which being the head guy, the head of the military that launches all of these different campaigns, uh, is essentially the president of the United States. He's the one that listens to the top generals and then makes the decision on whether or not they should go to war. Obviously, in the past, the United States had a bunch of different checks and balances that stopped the president from being able to launch war all by himself. Uh, but since uh, basically 9-11, those um, ideas have basically been washed completely away, and now the president has full dictatorship and control over where and when he wants to launch the military and enter into any kind of wars that he sees Fit. So obviously that is a major problem. Another major problem that comes about with this hierarchical structure of the military is that certain individuals might end up in certain positions where they aren't necessarily the best for those positions. Obviously the military is a little bit different from real life where a lot of the people that end up in higher positions do have a lot of training and knowledge and know-how about those specific um, areas, but there is a certain amount of well, the same kind of things that go on in our modern day society that go on uh, within the military. So if every once in a while, you do end up with people higher up on that food chain that might not know as much, might not have done as much, might not uh, be as intelligent or tactical or aware as other people that maybe should have gotten those positions instead, but they got there because of, well, various other reasons. So obviously we have a problem with the structure, we have a problem with uh, the hierarchy, we have a problem with the guy at the very top making all those decisions, and we have a problem uh, with just <laughs> generally having the military structured the way that it is currently. It's, it's, very, it's a very flawed uh, system. So, how do we fix this? Obviously, we do it with anarchy. Anarchy is the only way to fix this problem, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how we could fix it through an anarchist method. Now, if we were to use an anarchist method to be able to have a military, the military would be structured in a very different way. Uh, very much uh, similar to the way anarchists structure uh, businesses with the people that run and or with the people that work and uh, run the machines and the businesses and the factories actually owning them and being able to vote on who is in charge, very similar would uh, be the military and the way that the military is structured in an anarchist structured society. Now, that would mean that the soldiers together would, as a collective group, be able to vote on who their sergeant was or who their commander was based on that person's performance. If they're the best person in that position for that job, they will inevitably get that job because, well, a sergeant or uh, a superior officer in a military structure is kind of the guy that calls the shots and makes sure that certain tactics that the infantry or the lower level guys do doesn't get them killed and results in a win. So obviously the person that is able to make the best decisions, keep the most people alive and has the most tactical mind to get those wins is going to be the person that ends up in the position that <laughs> gets to control a certain amount of uh, the people that are under him. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we are eliminating the hierarchy altogether, 
but under anarchism, it isn't a matter of eliminating all hierarchies. It's a matter of eliminating all unjustified hierarchies. So there might be a commander or several commanders working in a group that basically command the uh, infantry or the military, the soldiers themselves to go do a thing. And that really is helpful for a lot of different reasons. One of which being you need to have, uh, or at least sometimes you need to have a certain number of people uh, that have a lot of knowledge, a lot of information, a lot of know-how, um, and a big picture understanding of the entire war that are directing the smaller guys to do their smaller parts. It kind of works all together in a uh, in, in kind of a machine sort of fashion, where the people that are making a lot of the bigger decisions have the bigger, broader picture in mind, and then they delegate tasks to people that are able to section off that big picture and focus in on more important smaller aspects and laser focus in on those and fix those problems and even smaller than that they have smaller groups that focus in on those smaller problems and focus in on smaller problems within those problems so they can fix those uh, that's basically how this sort of thing would be structured and it works very well and it has worked very well in the past obviously there are many different examples of how anarchist structured militaries have worked in the past uh, one of which being the cnt fai in catalonia spain and also the uh, black army of ukraine um, in ukraine uh, just to name a few and they had a system where no individual soldier was any more or less important than any officer. All the officers had to wash their dishes and clean their clothes just like everybody else. They weren't treated any differently. They were treated like regular people. But those people happened to have better ideas or better strategies or more information that allowed them to kind of take a role of being able to say, hey, this idea is good, this idea would work, this idea would make us win, and people see that, so that's how they get into those sorts of positions. So that's basically taking care of a lot of the different problems, but how would that be structured? Um, we can't obviously have a centralized uh, military. We'd have to have a decentralized military because that's how anarchism is. You don't want to have uh, the entire military dictated from one specific spot or else that's not really anarchism and it allows for all of the problems like I was saying before with the president or whoever's in charge uh, being able to launch military campaigns wherever the hell they want and we don't want that to happen so obviously when it comes to any offensive uh, actions there would have to be some sort of strata structure something in place that stops people from just you know launching these campaigns or whatever so the idea is basically to have a decentralized military uh, that works in a similar way to a community defense force each community would have their own small militia group and those small militia groups would be able to work together in aggregate uh, as a larger cluster right affinity groups and clusters i'll leave another link to uh a video in the description box box below that talks a little bit about that they would work in affinity groups and then in clusters so they would be able to work as a uh offensive force if for whatever reason that um anarcho-communist structured society decided that they wanted to go on full war with another country but that doesn't really help much. So, so obviously that covers the offensive version. That stops people from being able to have offensive wars willy-nilly because every little community has to get together and vote on if they want to put their boys or, you know, their soldiers, <laughs> uh, their men, women, and, and non-binary people uh, towards the, in this uh, fight for a war. So every community has to be on board with that. And every community that is can get together and do it. Every community that isn't doesn't have to. And that's the beauty uh, of anarchism. That's the beautiful thing about having a true democracy is that uh, we can, you know, make those decisions and determinations and so forth. But when it comes to defensive uh, positions, protecting the country, protecting the uh, community, whatever it is, Obviously, you have to be able to have uh, individuals that are ready at a moment's notice to shoot off and make sure that they can protect uh, the homeland or wherever they are from any kind of enemy attacking. So, reasonably, that would mean that you would have to have a certain amount of reserve troops that are standing, uh, waiting to be um, in a situation where they can actually protect uh, their community.
So like I said, individual communities could have individual community protection uh, in the form of some sort of militia group. And uh, those militia groups could also work together to protect the homeland in its, in its entirety in, on a moment's notice when given the direction from whatever strata that anarcho-communist structure society decided to set up. So um, that covers defense, that covers offense, that covers how the military would be structured, and that's basically everything that I wanted to say today. So if you have any more information or any other ideas of how anarcho-communist structured militaries could function, definitely leave a comment in the comment section down below. And if you want a little bit more information about the military directly from somebody that was actually in the military, please check out the uh, YouTuber named User Uncertain. I'll leave a link in, their, in the description box for them as well. Uh, they have uh, some really good information about all of this sort of thing. Not specifically how anarchism uh, would function, but basically about the United States military, why they joined, and a couple of really interesting stories that I thought were very compelling. So check them out uh, and... As always, thanks for watching.